What's up everyone, Christina, nurse practitioner here. Today I will be going over pulmonary embolism that is part of a respiratory emergency. In this video, you will be able to identify what is a pulmonary embolism, your emergency classic signs and symptoms, how to intervene and management of care. If you're new to my channel, I encourage you to subscribe as I upload new videos on a weekly basis with great nursing content. And don't forget to smash that like button for the YouTube algorithm. I will also be providing an outline of the content in this video. So make sure to download, print out, and have on hand to take some notes. Download link in the description. Okay, let's get started. A pulmonary embolism occurs from the process of entrance of solids, liquids, or air that enters the blood circulation and travels to the right side of the heart and lodges in the pulmonary artery. Therefore, it obstructs the pulmonary blood flow, which reduces gas exchange that results in hypoxemia. So the first sign of a respiratory emergency would be a drop in oxygen saturation. And if not acted on quickly, it can result in death. So here's an interesting fact. Pulmonary embolism, also referred to as PE, is accountable for about 100,000 deaths each year, just within the United States. Isn't that number astounding? And it's considered a preventable death. So when you're rounding for your patients and the team wants to know if your patient's on a PPI, like protonics, SCDs, or TED hose, or heparin sub-Q to prevent a PE, there is a reason. Our goal is to reduce the number of mortalities, so keep watching. And if if you haven't yet, be sure to smash that like button. Most importantly, you are the key player in advocating to the healthcare provider if your patient does not have a PPI ordered or if they refuse, go the extra mile and educate your patient on why it's crucial to have and document. So let's get familiar with the terms. Embolism is a blood clot and a thrombus can be a fatty deposit of air. So when a PE occurs, typically it is from a DVT, which is a deep vein thrombosis. It occurs from a blockage and a piece of the clot breaks off and can travel to the right side of the heart and gets stuck in the pulmonary artery. When this occurs, it results in alveolar dead space and creates this VQ mismatch. So the platelets attack the site of the embolus that naturally create this constriction of the blood vessel. So for patients at risk for a PE, it would include your bedridden patients, so prolonged immobility, um, surgery, pregnancy, if they have central venous catheters, obesity, aging, smoking, stroke, cancer, or genetic conditions that increase blood clotting. So as a priority nursing safety, it's crucial to recognize signs and symptoms of a PE and know when to respond by calling the RRT, which is a rapid response team. They're awesome. So signs and symptoms that are classic for a pulmonary embolism include a sudden drop in SATs. That is why it can present as a respiratory emergency, so dyspnea. If your patient is alert and verbal, a feeling of impending doom, which is like textbook, possibly a cough, some crackles, or a pleuritic um, friction rub, hemoptysis, which is bloody sputum, and a rise in respiratory rate. Within the cardiovascular system, it can present with hypotension, like low blood pressure, tachycardia, which is an increased heart rate, or presence of that S3, S4 heart sound, or pleuritic chest rub, which is that sharp stabbing pain on inspiration. So if your patient is presenting with any of these symptoms, always make sure to manage the airway and support the patient with supplemental oxygen, if not already done so, and evaluate for cyanosis and level of consciousness also get a 12 lead EKG to monitor for changes of T wave inversion or ST elevation. So some labs that are pertinent to APE include an ABG, arterial blood gas. Initially, it may present as respiratory alkalosis from anxiety or hyperventilation. And be sure to check out my ABG video link so you know and understand how to read an ABG. You will want also a BMP, which is your basic metabolic panel. This is, um, will measure your electrolytes. Troponin will detect if presence of a heart attack and be sure to trend every six hours for a series of three. So with the PE, it will cause a right ventricular myocardial stretch that will cause a rise in troponin level. Your BNP is your brain natriuretic peptide. This lab is diagnostic for heart failure. There will be a rise in BNP because of the blockage of the clot in the pulmonary artery. Your D-dimer, this test helps support the diagnosis in PE because of the rise in fibrinolysis that occurs from the pulmonary artery being blocked, as I mentioned earlier, with the pathophysiology, the platelets attack the site of the embolus and naturally create this constriction of the blood vessel. 
So keep listening and I'll go over a review of pressors used for the critical patient to help maintain their blood pressure. So imaging. So it would consist of a CT scan, stat, a chest x-ray to rule out other respiratory conditions, a Doppler ultrasound to rule out a DVT. Types of pulmonary embolism consist of a massive PE, which is your worst case scenario. Mortality is as high as 65%. So symptoms are consistent with severe hypotension, requiring vasopressors such as dopamine, levofed to help support the blood pressure and drips such as dibutamine, milrinone, also increase the myocardial contractility, vasodilators such as nitroprusside to decrease pulmonary artery pressure. Other medications considered would be blood thinners like your TPA um, or a heparin drip for a massive PE typically results in a code where CPR and ACLS, which is your advanced cardiovascular life support is initiated. So for your submassive PE, symptoms would be you want to do an echocardiogram. There will be changes, right ventricular dysfunction. A 12-lead EKG may have ST elevation, T-wave inversion, or a right bundle branch block and elevated labs of BMP or troponin. Medications would be fibrinolytic therapy, heparin. It would also be a shared decision between your healthcare provider and the patient and family. And last, your low risk PE. Possible symptoms would be an absence, but more of a preventive approach. So make sure your patient is on a PPI, a blood thinner, which is a low molecular weight heparin. Um, some key crucial points to be aware of is if a heparin drip is started, the patient will later be transitioned to an oral anticoagulant such as Coumadin, also known as Warfare, and you want to maintain the INR between two and three, and it usually takes about six weeks while they're on it or longer. Your antidote for heparin is protamine sulfate, and the antidote for Coumadin would be your vitamin K. You want to monitor for evidence of bleeding. This would also include measuring the abdominal girth for GI or internal bleeding. While your patient is on a heparin drip, always double verify your drip during titration changes, handoff report, or upon transfer transferring your patient to prevent a medication error. Some surgical interventions that are important to know for management of a pulmonary embolism is your IVC filter. This is a filter that is placed in your inferior vena cava to prevent a blood clot, such as an emboli reaching your lungs. And for the patient at risk for bleeding or can't take any blood thinners, an alternative option is a surgical embolectomy where they remove the embolus. And the outcomes you want for your patient with a PE is that he or she has has sufficient oxygenation and maintains normal saturation. It remains hemodynamically stable, meaning their blood pressure remains within normal and no signs of shock. Anxiety is reduced by addressing the patient's needs and empowering them with what is going on and signs and symptoms of when to notify for help. And the patient is aware of bleeding risk and uses alternative options such as like a soft bristle toothbrush to prevent bleeding gums. And you wanna make sure that you empower the patient and educate them so they know how to respond to a medical emergency. Again, thank you so much for watching. Be sure to subscribe for upcoming notifications. Take care.